During the good days, all this place is full of blood. Then we, we, we keep our reagents on this other side. Last week, the executive director of the Uganda Blood Transfusion Services, Dr. Dorothy Cheyune, told NTV that the National Blood Bank in Kampala was running dry with a deficit of 1.2 billion shillings needed for fuel to enable the institution collect blood from donors across the country. Our budget was, the, fuel, the travel budget was reduced by already 200 million. And okay, we started off with the negative. So the, and we had planned, we had planned to use this money to help us in our blood collection operations in the communities. In the face of such national blood crisis, hematologists or specialists in blood studies are encouraging the use of blood stimulating medicines that could help those who need more blood in their body system. There are some medicines that can stimulate formation of red blood cells from the bone marrow. Uh, we call them erythropoietin stimulating agents. Erythropoietin is the hormone that is produced naturally by the kidneys, but it can help to stimulate formation of extra red blood cells from the bone marrow. So we can use that in some patients. A leading hematologist, Dr. Henry Dungu, who is attached to the Uganda Cancer Institute, explains the circumstances under which these medicines can be administered. It all depends on the cause of the low blood levels. For example, here at uh, cancer, we have patients becoming anemic because of the treatments we give them, or because of the diseases they have that are having an effect on the centers that produce blood, the bone marrow. So we need to make sure that uh, we use other options in terms of stimulating formation of more blood. He says in a bid to save blood in such trying moments, blood can be drawn from expectant mothers and transfused back to them after they give birth. This is the time they need blood most. Or any other person, if they're to undergo surgery, you say, okay, let's take off your blood, keep it somewhere, then we'll replace it after surgery. But such methods are rarely used in developing countries like Uganda due to the high costs involved. So if we are going to use auto transfusion, of course it would be expensive to process, getting the exchange bags and making sure that um, it is nicely kept, it might have a cost. But it won't be as expensive as when we get blood from a different donor. So if we talk about use of um, plasma expanders, we are going to use the same fluids that we use in the general market. And such methods come with some side effects. So if a person uses any of them and they get a reaction, for example, they get allergic reactions, we say don't use that medicine again. So we always give it in accordance with the doctor's directives. But as the first option, the doctor strongly recommends good intake of certain foods to increase the blood volume in the body without the application of drugs and injections. Blood comes from a number of items. I don't say blood, but building blocks for blood, especially iron. You can get it from beetroot, you can get it from green leafy vegetables, you can get it from uh, animal products like uh, meat or beef or liver. You can get all those from the food that you eat. Dr. Dungu also discourages the resort to desperate measures by some people who take animal blood to boost their blood levels. But even when such options can be considered, human blood remains the best option if there is need for blood transfusion. Ali Mivule, NTV.